guys don't know me, I'm Bobby Fuschke. I'm one of the names on the door. Doesn't really mean much. This is uh, Stacia Jackson. She's one of our instructors here. She's very, very knowledgeable about nutrition and everything that it entails. So when she comes up here, make sure you guys pay attention because she's going to tell you so much stuff. So I, if anybody knows me, you know that I am big on history. I love history. It's what I do. Um, does anybody know where the food pyramid or nutrition that we know it came from? Close. So, let's start. In 1971, in Sweden, on the other side of the world. In 1971, there was a horrible recession that was going on. If some of you guys were alive, you might remember. But there was a horrible recession going on at the end of not just the World War II in Europe, but the end of the Vietnam War as well. So post-war recessions happen every time. So Sweden sees that the year before they've had a horrible growing season and they've had a horrible recession. Inflation's gone up, food prices have gone up. So they meet with their co-op, their publicly owned growing company in Sweden. It's called KF. So they meet with KF and they say, so how are we going to cur curtail our our famine is going to happen. What, how are we going to fix it now for next year? So Sweden, who's huge on iron oil, is right across the sea from the Baltic Sea from Germany. At the time, Germany is the largest producer of wheat and barley in the world, larger than the United States with half the size. Half of their crops of barley and wheat that they use for their beer are rejected, so they have all this excess. So they start trading with Sweden to help increase Sweden's food production. Sweden gets together as a nation and builds bread factories because bread and grain are nutritious. So with the help of KF, a publicly owned co-op, and Sweden's government, we start with our pyramid of nutritious, they call it eat this every day, all day. So they start with the pyramid. The pyramid is broken into three sections. The bottom section is the cheapest, easiest thing to get. It's grains. Grains. You guys will see this is kind of start taking shape for it. Grains. They're mass produced, easily enriched, easily changed into any other product. They're going to be our basis of our diets. The next thing they know is they have a whole growing season. Their food to import is very expensive, but they know we have to have vegetables. They know we've got to have vegetables. So we're going to make one section, and we're going to call it vegetables and fruits. We know we need fruits, but they're just so expensive, so we'll just put them in there with the vegetables. The very top of the pyramid, and it's only three sections, the very top of the pyramid everything else. It's meats, it's dairies, it's sugars, it's fats. It's the stuff you really need to survive. So we'll just put it up there because it's really expensive. So we'll just write meats, dairy, sugar, and fat. All right. So KF, a locally owned, not-for-profit company, decides, well, behind, behind every nonprofit organization, there's a profit organization walking around somewhere. They own a magazine called V Magazine, V-I. V Magazine decides if this is what the, what the government wants us to eat, we should get this out there, we should sell our magazine. So they published this. Uh, a lady named Ann Berta Hingrid or something like that. I'm not going to treat that bad, but she is the head of the KF, the Lobio Co-op, and the head of the magazine. She publishes it. But as soon as she publishes it, the next year, Sweden distances themselves from this pyramid. They say, oh, no, no, no. If you look up Sweden's food, or Sweden's nationally recognized thing, it's a circle that's broken into, into pie shapes. They distance themselves immediately from this. Kaya and E Magazine run this three times in two years. They run, this is what we need to have. 
So between 1974 and 1977, this is run three times. Time Magazine sees that, hey, there's something going to end. For whatever reason they published it, whether it was excess space in a magazine, whether it was somebody saw it and thought, hey, that's a good idea, wherever it came from, Time Magazine, number one publication at the time, publishes this pyramid. So they published this pyramid, everybody starts recognizing this. The United States starts seeing, hey, they've got something that they need to eat. We have, we don't have any guidelines, we don't have anything. So now this has been ran in Time Magazine. At the same time, inflation in the United States is running through the roof. One person can no longer stay home with family. Two people have to throw out to work to be able to support the families. That takes away all the gardening that people do. That takes away all the farming that people can do. Everybody starts moving to metropolis areas and starts buying food, start buying canned food, start buying processed food. Wheat products change from being good, solid, whole grain products that people take sometimes to being our everyday basis. So, 1995 comes along. And the United States Department of Agriculture gets a hold of this food pyramid again. And in 1995, wherever it came from, whether they needed rules so that they could fix them later, or whether it came from lobbyists, I don't know. I haven't been able to find out. I have to know where it came from. In 1995, the United States Department of Agriculture decides they need to step in and help us help ourselves be nutritious. Because we've been eating processed foods. We've been gaining weight. We have no idea what's going on. There's no research behind anything that's been processed, anything that we've been following. And in 1995, they take this pyramid, they draw that line there, and they draw a line there, and it's everything we know about nutrition. Right? How many people have seen this? Six to 11 grains, two to three veggies, three to four fruits, one to two meats, one to two dairies, and two <coughs> sugars. Everybody's seen this, right? So now that we in 1995 with zero research, we have Times Magazine publishing an article, and we have Sweden from 1972 publishing an article. We now have everything that we know about nutrition. Here it is. So 1995 comes to the others. Now we have the internet. Now we have fast food restaurants. Now we become a society of business. Next thing that happens, we have microwave dinners. We have $5 pizzas. We have everything that we eat right now that we think are good, and we have them now. There's no time for gardening. There's no time for taking care of your own food. There's no time or energy or money to take care and eat nutritious food. Nutritious food prices go through the roof. You can get up by an entire, entire milk for 45 cents out of the frozen section. Nutritious whole grain foods, nutritious meats, everything that's great for us skyrockets. Everything that we can afford drops. And so now we've become a society of obesity. In 2005, after, nine, or after almost 11 years of this food pyramid, the United States government starts seeing obesity rise through the roof. We see it every time people say, but what's happening? We're eating, our, we're eating exactly as we're told. We're not eating any sugars. We're eating vegetables and fruits and tons of grains. Why are we eating fat? In 2005, they changed everything that you know about the food pyramid, but nobody really said anything. Why? Because for 12 years, everything that they've been telling us has been wrong. In 2005, they draw a plate. And this plate is broken up into four unequal sections. These sections are more than a quarter of meat and protein, less than a quarter of fruits. Oh, yeah. Fruit. Less than a quarter of dairy. Yeah. And more than a quarter of vegetables. So, then they draw a little cup here, and they say, fats. 
So they're getting on the right track, but they distance themselves from this because they see after 12 years of pushiness that the country is just skyrocketing. <laughs> so what research has started to show that your body is not designed and evolution hasn't made it to the point where your body is designed to break down grains. So everything that we've been eating, especially in rich grains, especially bleached grains, your body takes in, it gets stuck in your esophagus, it gets stuck in your intestines, it gets stuck in your bowels, and it becomes Crohn's disease, celiac disease, gallbladder issues. Everything, they take an umbrella and they throw it over everything, and they call it syndrome X. Syndrome X is exactly what they created by telling us that we had to eat six to 11 grains every day. Syndrome X is heart disease, it's uh, liver failure, it's depression, it's more and more issues than anyone will take credit for, and it's because of the way we eat. So now that they start distancing themselves from this, at the same time, the United States is conducting a multi billion dollar research project with diet books. Diet books are very expensive because everyone wants to try the new bagel diet. The Atkins diet comes out, and people look at it and are like, that's the stupidest thing I ever saw. Why do you eat nothing but bacon? So people are eating all this bacon, and they're getting healthier. People are eating bacon that's loaded in cholesterol, loaded in fat, and they're getting healthier. How many people remember when the Atkins diet came out, and everybody shook their heads like, this is stupid, you're gonna die. I remember, I was a little kid, I remember my mom doing it, and I thought, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. So, as the Atkins diet starts taking off, and people see these results, blood pressure is coming down, heart disease is coming down, but they're eating all these fatty, meaty foods, everything we've been told not to eat. So, as time has evolved, the zone diet has come out, the beach diet has come out, the south beach diet has come out. We see all these different healthy diets that are coming out that are taking us on a ramp. And now we're starting to make results. We're starting to see things, but it's not from anything that we've ever been told. It's from people actually doing these diets, people actually doing research. This had no research. This was one country, one time, one year, trying to save their countries, trying to save themselves from everybody going through horrible famine and health issues. And yet, it was everything we knew for 20 years. So, now that we know why we got fat, let's, let's bring Daisha up and she'll help us how to get unfat. <laughs> right? Daisha Jackson. Thanks, Bobby. Now that Bobby's explained a little bit about why we're in this mess, um, why, why do we have all the heart disease? Why do we have cancer, hypoglycemia, hypertension? Um, all these different um, diseases, it kind of makes sense when you, see, when you thought that this was the standard, right? And what it all comes down to, guys, excess carbs, excess sugar. Yeah, it's not coming off, is it? Thanks. Look how good he is to me. Um, so it's, it's, the, it's this pyramid of the excess carbs and the excess, excess sugar. And today is, um, the reason why we're doing this nutrition is the kickoff for our 30-day challenge. Have you guys heard about that yet? Yes, no, hands? It's a 30-day challenge. <clears throat> we, don't want to, we don't want to say, here's a diet. Try this diet. We don't want to put a name on it and say, here, do this. You can eat this and this and this. Don't eat this and this and this. This is allowed. This isn't allowed. This is a nutrition class. This is the science behind how we fuel our bodies. We're not going to say, this is allowed, this isn't allowed. What we want to focus on is... Ideal, not so ideal, not ideal. Because in a real world, in, in our lives, we're not going to be on this diet all the time. We need to learn how to eat. We need to learn how to fuel our bodies and be healthy. It's not about jumping on a diet that works for you so you can lose some weight and then you get to eat normal. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> Raise your hand if you've done that. <laughs> you guys, I'll tell you a little bit of my background really quick before I jump into this, and I'll try and make it fast. Um, I, was, uh, I was a dancer since I was age three and a gymnast. At age uh, 13, I took a pretty hard fall coming out of a double back tuck, and I lit right on my lumbar spine, and I, I herniated three discs pretty bad, and that was at a, at a young age. 
and I didn't really get a proper treatment for it or I was pretty much inoperable. And so what they said is this will gradually catch up to you, but there's not really much you can do it. Well, last, uh, uh, t about two years ago in March, it caught up to me. It finally ruptured and ripped and my disc went out into my nerve canal and I found myself on my couch. I lost my quality of life. Um, I, I lost function. I could barely put on my pants. My surgeon said, don't lift a gallon of milk. He said, don't lift your son ever again. And, my, and he was only two, two and a half. Um, something happened to me. I, I was in so much pain. Uh, if anybody's had nerve pain in here, you understand it's a special kind of pain. I rated it like uh, childbirth was 10, nerve pain was 12 for me. I would fall on the floor screaming. And I felt like I was broken. And I felt like um, there wasn't much hope for me left. And I, it wasn't depression. It was just a kind of a loss of my own, just taking control of my own life. I listened to my surgeon for exactly one year. I spent a year pretty much on the couch, moving and doing what I can, bending like this to pick anything up. Um, I spent a year miserable. I gained 45 pounds. And um, uh, last, it wasn't, it's coming up this March. It'll be a year since I took control of my life, okay? So it was two marches ago. I woke up and I said, enough, done. I'm not listening to the surgeon anymore, enough. I'm not, no one's gonna tell me what I can and can't do. So what I started to do, I thought, hey, I'm a dancer. I know structure, I know anatomy. I gotta figure this out on my own. I'm gonna figure this back out on my own. So what I figured was if my, my spine's compressed, and if my spine's inflamed, two things need to happen. I need to control inflammation. I need to know every single food that goes in my mouth, is that going to cause inflammation? And that's what Bobby was talking about, grains, okay? It's not so much that it gets stuck in a sense, it's gluten in there, it's a binding molecule and it just inflames and you don't even know it, okay? Another thing that I knew that needed to happen was besides the inflammation and controlling my diet, I knew I had to get muscle. I knew that if I had muscle, imagine, I kept imagining my back ripped, like muscly, holding up my spine, holding it strong. Started to walk, and I'm like, okay, this is working a little bit. I'm getting a little bit more mobile. I, I still had an immense amount of pain, though. Then I started to jog. Bad idea. Impact, impact, impact. But I thought, okay, what am I gonna do to get strong? And what am I gonna do to get this weight off? So what I found out was if I ran really fast, there wasn't much impact. I was booking it. I got to the point where I was running five miles, and guess what happened? The weight did start coming off. It started coming off to a point. But do you know what? I couldn't keep up that five miles for very long. Something interesting also happened. If I didn't have a certain amount of intensity, like if it didn't just kick my butt, my back hurt. It didn't even count. But if I ran five miles a day, my back didn't hurt. It was so interesting. So I thought, wow, this is gonna work. I'm gonna count my calories. Have you guys done that before? Done the counting calories thing? Um, so I counted my calories, and I'm going, 1,200 calories, that's it. But I've got to make sure I get my 1,200. And so I was watching every calorie in and every calorie out. With my five-mile run and the way I was eating, I was getting like 3,600 calorie burn. I was burning those off, but I was only taking in 1,200. So you'd think, wow, she's going to get pretty skinny burning all that off, right? Nope. Five miles a day, guys. And I, I, I thought I was making good, healthy choices. I thought I was doing things right. I even bought a body bug. Those things that go on your arm, it tells you how many calories that you burn. That's how I knew that number. And I was tracking, and I'm like, man, I should be skinny how much I'm running. But do you know what? Skinny wasn't really on my, the forefront of my brain. Do you remember what the initial thing was? My back. I didn't care about the skinny. I cared about the pain I was in. I cared about getting my life back. And so, that through this whole process, this, this is how I've come to learn these different things. This, I'm, I'm sharing with you my experience. I'm not speaking from like some years and years of nutritional college or something. I'm telling you what I've learned. I'm telling you I've tried about every diet in the book before my back was hurt, including the HCG diet. Have you heard of that one? Stab yourself in the leg with a shot. Put, inject a hormone in your body. Tried it. I lost 45 pounds in 35 days. Guess how long it took to gain it back? Two and a half weeks. Oh, I can eat normal now. Bam, there's the weight right back. Okay, people, we don't, we don't need a diet. We need to get smart, okay? 
So what happened was um, I learned that it's not about calories in and calories out. It's about your food choices. And I also learned that I couldn't get strong on my own. And I couldn't sit at, at the rec center doing this. <laughs> this was not getting my back strong. Rec center doing this. That wasn't getting my back strong. Who's done that? Who knows what I'm talking about? The machines? Wasn't getting me strong. CrossFit. Found CrossFit. Saved my back. All of a sudden, I'm getting this, this tight, tight core because of the overweight. But I'm not having to bend my back in this ugly position. But then CrossFit introduced paleo. This right here. This is, the, this is the key to changing your body. This is the key to being fit. Eat lean meats, vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, some fruit, little starch, no sugars. And this is what we're going to go through today. We will teach you what the, how to eat like this. We will teach you why to eat like this. You combine CrossFit with Paleo, and it, 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 it gets you from here to there to there. And do you know what's interesting? You know, have you guys ever related um, unhealthy, maybe uh, heart problems, hypoglycemia, diabetes? Have you ever related it to the other end to being fit? In my mind, it was all like either sick or you're well. But clear on this spectrum, something happens if you pay attention to your CrossFit or to your diet or to your exercise and then add in nutrition, the fitter you get, the stronger you get, the thinner you get. Does that make sense? It's not about being skinny. It's about being fit and it's about being healthy. And so right here, as you work and work and work and you're getting well and you get stronger, you get faster, you get thinner, you get leaner. And, and the fit, this fit's all going to come together if you combine your exercise with the proper uh, amount of nutrition. So let's start at the top. Before we do that, though, let's, let's break down basics of, of nutrition. And I think you guys, uh, it, it goes really well if you guys, like, call out names, holler questions, interrupt me. We do want your input. Okay, uh, food is our fuel. Food is what we need for proper process in the brain, for energy to just do our daily activity, for our organs to function right. That, that's our fuel. So right here, we're going to say, what is our fuel made of? Food is uh, our fuel. Macronutrients. And you don't have to get particular, and you don't have to remember this. Micro. Macro means big. And you guys that have dieted and pay attention to what you're eating, you know what we're talking about. The three main things that we can classify foods as. Who knows one? Anybody? What do we want for muscle? What do we eat to get muscle? Protein. Thank you. Thank you. Protein. Carbs. Thanks. What else? Protein, carbs, and thank you. Fats. Those are the three things. When you eat something, it needs to fall in one of those categories. Okay? If it doesn't fall in one of those categories, you're like, oh, I don't know where to put this. Sometimes um, it might be because it's so processed, it's kind of lost its roots. It's like... <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. Or sometimes it'll be a little tricky, and I'll, I'll tell you how to work through those. Micronutrients, it's the really small things. That'd be the vitamins and the minerals, okay? Uh, today, we're not, we don't mean to blow off this, the micronutrients because they are important, but we're going to focus mostly on these. When considering um, the, these micronutrients, what I want you to consider is um, the most bang for your buck. They're called nutrient-dense, meaning um, you could eat a lot of lettuce to get the amount of vitamins that you need. Not nutrient dense, right? But versus kale, looks the same, but a lot more nutrients packed in there. Well, when you make food choices, we want to go for nutrient dense, meaning it's got lots of vitamins and minerals, so you don't have to eat a whole heck of a lot of it. It's packed in there. So here we are with proteins, carbs, and fats. And just regarding this, for your best array of this, the best combination of this, and the best amount of this, your optimal food is going to be a whole food. Give me an example of one whole food. What's a whole food? Anybody? Apple. Thank you. A whole food right there, an apple. Uh, you would maybe say natural foods? Is that another way to say it? An apple. Someone said a cucumber. Um, the, the, these things that grow out of the ground, things that haven't been processed, things that your great-grandma wouldn't look at and say, is that even food? Think of how many things we eat like that. Like, okay, if she found a Pop-Tart on the ground, oh, she'd be like, what is that? You know what I mean? at whole foods, foods that we are meant to eat right here. 
Would you, would you consider bread that you have to dump in flour, uh, sugar, salt, eggs? Is that a whole food? No, that's a processed food. Okay, we get whole foods right now? Whole foods are going to be nutrient dense. Whole foods are going to have the, the best amount of vitamins and minerals. Okay, a whole food that you wouldn't think about because it doesn't grow, meat. It's a complete protein. And what happens is when we eat the best kind of meat possible is that this fat right here, there's three kinds of fats. I don't want, need you to memorize them. But w the more balanced that those fats are, the healthier it is for us. Um, have you guys heard of like saturated fat, unsaturated? Yes, uh, polyunsaturated. Mono. Okay, those are the fats. We don't need to delve into them. We do want a, a nice array of that. Okay, so this, here we go. This is foods. We want to go with whole foods right here. That's our optimal choice. And now, let's get down into the different kinds of foods really quickly. That first one, lean meats. Shout out some of the meats that we usually eat on a daily basis, or that you guys do. Beef. Yeah, my family's a big beef eater. Chicken. Who eats tuna in here? Yeah, Bobby, he's the tuna guy. When you guys do tuna, do you do it out of the can? Yeah? You what? In the pouches, right. So um, tuna is in that seafood category. And you remember how I said that um, there's a, a good ratio? Something about seafood, there's an awesome ratio of the fats. That's why it's so good for us. The, that seafood really helps us out. So we're talking about meats right now. Okay, um, you remember the three different categories? What category is meat for the muscle? Protein. protein. Okay, meat is our protein source. All right, and we're talking about the beef, the chicken, uh, eggs. Eggs will count that. Yeah, eggs will count. I know it's in the dairy section of our, of our grocery stores. Yeah, you're like, no, not so much dairy. No, it doesn't come from a cow. <laughs> All right, so um, eggs will be your protein. And I know that there's fat in there. For our, for our sake today, let's consider it a protein. I'll, and I'll, I'll, when we get to over here, I'll tell you why. Um, on these meats, one thing I want to mention right now, you know we want to go whole. If you can't get organic, um, there's, a, there's a reason why this organic is a little bit better for you and grass-fed, but it's expensive. Have you guys seen that? Have, if you've tried to buy it, it's expensive. I want to briefly touch on that because it's, it's pretty important. In our meat, uh, in the fats, there's omegas. Have you, you've heard of that, right? Omegas. There's omegas three and there's omega sixes. Um, in, in our meats, we try to have a nice ratio of this, but there tends to be a heavier amount of that six, except in seafood. Have you heard how fish is so good for you? <coughs> it's because it's higher in this omega threes. When we're talking about omegas, I know it can get a little bit confusing. What I want you to remember, this ratio needs to stay constant. If we get so many omega sixes, the animal proteins, and guess what else? There's a ton of omega-6s in. Nuts. Nuts is omega-6s too, right here. So um, this is a good way to think about it. Your omega-3s right here, guess what they are? Anti-inflammatories. Who relies on an anti-inflammatory? Who takes an anti-inflammatory? You remember my nerve condition? You remember that nerve condition? I had to re rely heavily on those anti-inflammatories. There are natural anti-inflammatories that I use now. It's called fish oil. You guys supplemented with fish oil? This, this right here, this recommends daily fish oil in there with that. It's because this fish oil is, um, here I'll just write anti inflam This fish oil right here is all omega-3s. And when you go to buy omegas, don't buy an omega-6. We eat too much of omega-6. The nuts, the meats, we, we eat too much omega-6. You don't need omega-6. We need to bring those omega-6s down with more omega-3s, okay? Is this making sense so far? All right, so those are anti-inflammatory. Guess what, these nuts, even though we have nuts and seeds right here, it's all about portion and control and balancing with this because nuts are very inflammatory. Does anybody know, sorry, my spelling is horrible. Um, does anybody know somebody with arthritis or has afflicted, that has a little bit of arthritis and an injury or anything? We think we pretty much all. Or an autoimmune disease. What about, do you know somebody with multiple sclerosis or lupus or some kind of autoimmune? These people, or if it's you, please watch your omega-6s. This is very inflammatory. Now, I gotta tell, some, I gotta tell you something very quick about inflammation. 
there's inflammation like when you sprain your ankle and then it swells up and it's all hot and you're like, oh, what do I do to myself? And it's immediate and you see it. There's another thing called silent inflammation. You don't know what's happening, but it's wreaking havoc on your organs. It's wreaking havoc on, on your nerves and even your DNA and you won't know it, okay? This inflammation comes from here. Too many omega-6s. Something interesting happens when you get uh, your cells in this condition with too many omega-6s. It creates this environment that healthy cells, they can't survive in. Guess what kind of cell can live in a really rich omega-6 environment? Cancer. You're so smart. Cancer cells. Isn't that interesting? You're, you're creating this environment where your our organs are struggling, your healthy cells are struggling, but yet cancer can thrive. Okay? We need to be aware of what we're supplementing with. Um, a few months back, when, I, when, I, when Bobby and Will told me to supplement with fish oil, I guess it was about six months back, um, I went and I grabbed omegas. I didn't look what I was getting, and it was omega-6s. Why? I, yeah, I didn't know that. So I, I, I went and I looked, and I wasn't getting any kind of a joint. They're like, hey, how's that helping your joints? And I'm like, no, not helping my joints. I got the wrong omegas, okay? You need to do that, and just, just to put it out there, there is an omega-3 fish oil that says no fish burps right on it. If you've taken it, you know what I mean, okay? So there is a, there is a brand out there where you're not going to get that rancid fishy, but fish taste. When we're talking about these omega-3 supplementing, one in the morning, one at night. If you can tolerate two in the morning, two at night, that would be ideal. But just get, getting, getting in there, just getting that fish oil started, that's going to help right there. Okay, inflammation is what it's going to come down to. Did you know that the silent inflammation can make you fat? It can skyrocket your body fat percentage. It can, it can increase your ability to get diabetes. This silent inflammation can settle in your joints. It can settle in your tissue, like fibromyalgia. Does that make sense? Okay, we need to watch this silent inflammation. The best way to control this inflammation in our body and even though you can't feel it, you're like, I don't have inflammation. You do, okay? The best way to control this inflammation is through here. Dr. Barry Sears is the one that wrote the Zone Diet, and he is all about the inflammation. Every time you hear one of his seminars or lecture, it's inflammation, inflammation. He's like, people, we're not eating right. We not only need to eat the right foods, but we need to eat it in the right ratio, which we're going to talk about, okay? So that, considering our proteins with that sixes in here, what we want to remember, this is the, what you need to take from this. Supplement with fish oil, rotate what kind of meat. I have some, I have some clients that, that have to get in their protein, but all they can gag down is chicken. And they have chicken every day, sometimes for, for lunch and dinner for their protein. Or a can of tuna every day for, for a month. <laughs> so alternate, try the fish, try shrimp. Try, try everything different that you can possibly do to alternate. So we're not always getting the same ratio of those omegas. That making sense. Any questions so far? Pork. Is pork? pork is your protein right here. And you know, we've heard pork is so controversial and oh, pork is this and pork is that. Pork is protein. And sometimes considering the source, it might not be as you would say a clean food as possible. But I would, I would much rather have you eat the pork get the protein, supplement with the fish oil. Does that make sense? Well, we, we, need to feed, we need to feed our bodies because if it's pork or, yikes, I better stay away from that, I'll grab something quick, here's a, here's a hot pocket, eat the pork, you know what I mean? We gotta, we gotta make wise choices. It all comes down to that ideal versus less ideal. As we continue this class today, I want you to consider that you're not gonna be ideal all the time. You might even just slip up, you know what I mean? And <laughs> yes, we all slip up. And in this less ideal food over here, it'll kind of creep in. But hopefully we're gonna get smart enough and understand our food enough that the foods we eat on a daily basis are gonna come from this ideal. And occasionally that less ideal food's gonna creep in there and it's not gonna be the end of the world, okay? All right, let's go, let's go on to vegetables. What does vegetables fit into, guys? Does anybody know where we put vegetables in those ma macronutrients? Carbs, okay? So veggies. I gotta tell you, when I went paleo, you know how that, how we, this is the way of eating right here, paleo. I wasn't paleo zone yet, it's just paleo. And we, in this way of eating, I went all carnivore. 
I was just eating meat all the time. I'm like, yeah, I was just eating meat, and I was neglecting this. And something interesting happened. In my wads, my numbers weren't moving. I just got stuck at the same weights. I wasn't getting better. I wasn't getting faster. I'm like, what's my problem? Pretty soon, two weeks of eating all carnivore, I had no energy. I was dragging. I'm like, Will, I don't know what my problem is. And then he said, go look at your blocks. And I'm like, blocks? Ah, you have to eat it in the right portions, okay? You need to get those vegetables in there. Vegetables will be your carbs. Okay, carbs right here, it's basically sugars. There's different kinds of sugars that we need to learn about. And I think if, if you take anything away from this class, it, this needs to be it. It's how our bodies process sugars. Because remember how we said at the beginning of class, the way we got fat, obese, all this heart disease, our children are obese. This is how it's because of the sugar and the carbs. So right here, in, in carbs or in sugar, there's glucose and there's fructose. There's a third one, but we don't, I, we don't need to deal with it today. Uh, glucose and fructose. Okay, just get this. We like glucose. Our bodies, not so much the fructose, right here. Fructose, not so much there. Um, what happens is the way our body metabolizes this fructose, it's harder for our bodies to do it. It makes our bodies more erratic, and it sends out a different set of hormones. This glucose is going to be found um, as the main source in your veggies, okay? We need to eat an array of veggies. Remember I said that there, I had some clients that would just eat the chicken? Well, all they would eat with the chicken is the broccoli. So they weren't getting that, we talked about the whole food, the array of the vitamins, the array of vitamins and, or of minerals and the nutrients. We need, a, we need to get an array of our vegetables for our carbs. So these, these vegetables definitely go in this carb group. Don't neglect them. And yes, you have to eat a lot to get your energy from vegetables. Does that make sense to you? It's not a very dense, it's not a very packed um, a food. So you do have to eat a lot of vegetables if you want to use that as your source of energy. Yes? That's right. Yeah, let's talk about the tier of vegetables, the, the, the priority, right, the, or the, the way we should eat them. Raw is definitely better for you, okay? Um, it, it kind of depends on the nutrients you're looking for. I, I was looking at spinach and how the nutrients change once you cook it, and sometimes an amount of a nutrient will increase after you cook it. Raw, I would say, is ideal. Steamed next, grilled next, frozen next, bottom of the line, canned. Okay, candy will take because the high pressure and the high steam, or the different preservatives, they'll take away some of those nutrients. Go for raw if you can. Lightly grill it or saute it in some coconut oil. Um, that's what I had for breakfast this morning. It's really good. And then if, you, if, you, if you're in a bind, just, yeah, it, rather than, oh, I don't have my fresh asparagus, dump a can of beans on your plate. Get your veggies down you. Does that make sense? All right, we've got vegetables, the glucose and fructose. Here comes one of the most important parts of this class, and I hope it's all making sense. So if it stops making sense, raise your hand, because right, this is important to get. When we, when we take uh, glucose or a carb or a sugar or a donut <laughs> or a banana, okay, same kind of sugars, okay? So, so we're, we're, we're cruising along about right here. Our metabolism's going like this. And all of a sudden, you take in a sugar. Let's even just go banana. Bam, right there. That sugar hits your bloodstream. And then your blood, this, that's why they say blood sugar. Your, your blood sugar goes up like this. And your body's like, oh, we need to get that back down to here. And so it sends out a hormone it's called insulin. You've heard of insulin? Yeah? So it sends out this hormone to come in, get that spike, and take it back down. But something happens you kind of dip down below where you were. And you gotta gradually come back up, and then you're, you're kind of cruising along again at a, this good homeostasis right there. This good way of burning your energy, okay? So we spiked it, it dropped down and came back up. And then something interesting happens right here. When you hit this low, you're like, ah, oh, I just feel like crap, I just, I just need, a, I need a little boost, right? So you just pop, what, a handful of peanut M&Ms in your mouth. Then all of a sudden, your blood sugar goes like this and then like that. See that spike? I'm so short, there we go. 
So what, you, get the, you get the point. That blood sugar spikes even higher, okay? And of course it's going to dip down again. And then that insulin's like, hey, oh, whoa, boost. More, more, more insulin to bring that down. Well, your next boost, guess what happens? This insulin comes and it can't get your spike down. It's like, wow, dump more insulin. Boom, not working. We need to get the blood sugar down. More insulin, more insulin. And it can't take those, all those spikes that we're getting all day long, it can't bring it down. The, ter the term for that is called hyperinsulinism. Or have you heard of um, insulin insensitivity? What that means is that your body is so tired of dumping insulin to get all your sugar down, it creates this environment. And the four deadliest diseases comes from this. Your body stopped responding to your insulin. Our body eating so much sugar, so much carbs, heck, even a banana. If eaten at the wrong time, it can spike your insulin. We just gotta be aware of how many times. So when we say spike your blood sugar or spike your insulin, we're talking about that spike right here. And then our body, we do that so many times that we create this environment and that's when we start getting fat we start getting sick, we start getting high cholesterol, uh, the diabetes, that, this is definitely the diabetes. Do we any, have any diabetics in here today? No, not today. Okay, this, this is so important. Um, you know how we, we were starting to talk about my calories in, calories out? And then I was running my rear off, seriously guys, I was running hard and I couldn't lose anything for the life of me. People, it's not about calories in and calories out when it comes down to it. Sure, it'll work for a while. It worked for me for like 15 pounds, calories in, calories out. What happened was I was burning so much, so fast, and not eating, eating enough. I would come home and I'd be like, okay, I just burned all that calories. I need to get my calories back up because I'm thinking calories. And so I would have my portion of rice, my one cup, I was so good, but it was white rice. Yeah, bam, right there. And I just spiked my insulin. When, in, when you spike your insulin like that, even just with a cup of white rice, it tells your body, store, store, store. So we're here, insulin tells your body, store. So probably that morning when I woke up, I was probably in a pretty good fat burning zone. On my run, I was in a good fat burning zone. I was in this zone. I was like, yeah, we're burning fat. White rice, bam. All of a sudden, the signal in your brain flips. Don't burn fat. Store, store, store. I was not losing any weight. I was metabolizing muscle. That meant that I needed more energy because I didn't have enough calories. So my body was using my muscles as, as its source of energy. Okay? Don't, I don't want you to get caught up in counting calories. And we'll teach you your portion sizes. What you need to learn is this. We can't spike our insulin. If losing weight is important to you, if losing fat, your body fat percentage is important to you, if gaining strength in your wad is important, gaining muscle mass, you have to understand this. This will mess you up bad. So how, the more I learned about this, I just wanted to like shout it out to everybody. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to know this. Because I would see people coming into CrossFit and they were working their rears off. They were going heavy reps. They were going nice tight form. They are going as fast as they can. And they were here like five days a week. No results. I just wanted to grab their shoulders and say, it's about the insulin. It's about what you're putting in your mouth. And not only what, but it's about when you're eating and then what you're eating with it. Questions on insulin? Anything? Or on sugars? Are we good on that? Okay, you can spike your insulin with healthy foods. I just want to put that out there. Um, we have that uh, Facebook page, a nutritional Facebook page for CrossFit. Have you guys been on that yet? Anybody? Yeah, we get some good topics going, right? But then I've seen a few things where like, hey, check out this paleo recipe. It's all natural. It's all paleo. It's like one cup of, of coconut oil, a cup. And then it was a cup and a half of raw organic honey. And then it was like dried fruit. Whoa, right there. Don't be caught up in this is all organic. I'll eat it. You have to know. Those will, it'll say organic brown rice sugar. You see that? Just scream, run away, run away. Syrup? Yeah. Cane syrup. Oh, organic cane syrup. No, it, it's sugar. OK? 
Okay? Um, while we're on this topic of sugar, I want to throw out their artificial sweeteners really quick. It's chemicals. That's it. It's chemicals. I just read a, a paper from Harvard a few days ago linking aspartame and sucralose to Alzheimer's, definitively. They could prove that it contributed to the onset of, of Alzheimer's. Watch what's in your food. Shout out, we got to know these. Who knows more names? Because I only said, um, okay, that's a good one. That's an, actually an herb. It's not man-made. It's a plant. So um, stevia, have you guys heard of that? It's on the shelf right next to the Splenda. Splenda is the chemical. Stevia is the leaf. And what, it's minimally processed. I use stevia, but not that often. I, I've kind of tried to just stick with this, and I want to be able to taste my fruit. I want to be able to taste my veggies and the spices. I don't want it to be all sweetened with sugar. But if you are having like a cup of green tea or whatever you use stevia in, that's a much better choice than the Splenda or the other things. Oh, I know. Have you guys heard of xylitol or malitol? If it ends, sorbitol, if it ends in T-O-L, it's a sugar alcohol. Just as bad for you, okay? That, and that stuff can make you bloat and put on weight, and you won't know why. You won't know why, but you'll wake up, you're like, man, what did I eat? It's those unnatural, those artificial sweeteners, okay? Sweet and low is, is pure um, saccharin. Oh, I'm glad you said that. That's different, huh? It's, differ it's different than your aspartame. It's called saccharin, and that's been linked to, in mice to cancer. I, you know what? I, I'm not sure. I think that's a more processed version of, ste of the stevia, okay? But you just look to see what's in it. Um, I thought they added um, maltodextrin, kind of like a thickener in there. And then I, I'll research that a little bit better. But, I, but we, when you sit, see, see those additives put in, we just really don't need it. Right, yeah. Uh, and then and this brings us down to a really good, like, the philosophy behind the class today. Ideal, less ideal. Ideal is your natural sugars right here. But guess what honey has, guys? Okay, so a spoonful of table, of table sugar, you know, just the sugar, the refined white stuff, it's got pretty equal balance between the fructose and the glucose. This one's the good one, remember? Guess what honey has most of? Fructose the one that's harder for your body to handle. Agave is a little bit better. I know that some diabetics, when they have to sweeten, they might use a little bit of agave, but it all comes down to how much, and, and then what else are you eating it with? If you're downing it on an empty stomach, yeah, spike, bad. And also, look at the caloric value of it. If it has a ton of calories, that's got a lot of sugar, okay? Be wise in your choices, ideal or less ideal. But if it comes down to, well, I'm not even going to eat this unless it's sweetened, and then you go hungry, eat it. You need food. But if it comes down to, do I sweeten with agave, or can I handle it without being sweetened, then, you know, it comes down to good choice, right? Ideal or less ideal. If you have to have it sweetened, and it's either saccharin, aspartame, or agave, use the agave. Are, are you with me? It's all down to the all just wise choices. And it's not like all or nothing. It's like, ooh, that's not on my list to eat. Well, just make a wise choice, yeah? Okay, so we got through the, the lean meats, the vegetables. The nuts and seeds, we kind of tapped on that already when we talked about our omega-3s, right? Omega-6s are in those nuts. If you have a lot of nuts and use it for your fats, and I do, but I feel like I, I well, I know that I'm balanced out okay with my ratio of omega-6s and omega-3s because I take my fish oil. If you do use nuts, make sure you take your fish oil, okay? One, one in the morning, one in the night. And, oh, this is the other thing. Remember I told you when I went paleo and I went all carnivore? And I was having nuts. I'm like, ooh, nuts, these make you feel full. And I'd have like this handful of them. Whoa, have you guys ever calculated how many calories is in a handful of nuts? And how many fats? Oh, I'm like, I felt good. I had tons of energy. I was not losing any weight at all. Not losing any weight. You're like, ah, uh, no. Okay, so we will get to portions when it comes down to here on, on nuts. Some fruit. Uh, the, the research that I've read that some fruit means if you eat your fruit normally and, and in a balanced meal and not just on an empty stomach, that would mean like three or four pieces of fruit a day. Be smart about your fruit. If you're a big fruit person, make good choices. When we talk about how high the spike is, how much of a response is going to freak our body out when we have it, it's called the glycemic index. It's just this chart of saying, ooh, you're going to huge spike with a, a banana. 
Not so much with a strawberry. It's the glycemic index. So if you see something that says a glycemic index of a large number, you're like, oh, wow, that's going to mess me up, and I'm going to stop burning fat. Okay? And you eat your berries. That's what I mostly eat is, is berries and apples. I do some citrus. Okay? I will show you right, well, I, we might as well go there right now. Um, in these CrossFit journals, I know we're out, but they're awesome. It gives you food choices in here, and it tells you how much, and it tells you portions. It's a really easy list to flip to and say, oh, I didn't have any fat, I need to get this. Um, it'll say in here your, your, your better fruit choices. Any questions on fruit? Yeah? I have a question about that before you raise it. Yes. Okay, so caffeine is a little bit different. It works more on your central nervous system, right? Not so much your blood sugar, but um, remember how I told you guys I did every diet out there? Like, seriously, I've almost done every supplement, too. Guys, I was a dancer, and I, I, had, I had always grown up with that ideal of that really thin ballerina body, and it took me a long time to learn I'm not that kind of a body. I'm, I'm a short, I've got, I've got, look, I've got shorter muscle. Right? I'm not going to get the long, thin, bony look, but I did everything I could to try and get there back in the day. And one was hydroxy cut for women, and I did thermostackers, I did thermogenics. And what that is, is that it's a, a caffeine with a white willow bark with a thermogenic element. And what it does is it makes your body rev higher. It makes you feel cold. I don't know if you've ever done that. You're shivering, so you're burning more calories. Hey, look at me, I'm burning calories. Oh, dumb. It was dumb. I can't believe I did that. And so, yeah, and guess what? I lost weight. Gained it right back once I stopped that stupid hydroxy cut. But guess where else it left me? Completely addicted to caffeine. Completely addicted. Not like, who I want to, I have to have it. Like, massive migraine if I don't have my caffeine. And I didn't know I was taking caffeine because I was dumb about it. I was taking, I'd say, the equivalent of 9 to 12 cups of coffee a day in that, the hydroxy cut. So they're like, yeah, pump it up to three, three pills, three, three times a day or two times a day. I was at the max. I, I totaled my caffeine because I couldn't figure out, I thought I had migraines. I couldn't figure it out. I had huge amounts of caffeine, and pretty soon my brain couldn't function properly without that caffeine input. My nervous system was messed, but guess what the worst thing was? I fried my adrenal glands. Fried. I felt like, I just felt like I couldn't get going, I was tired. My adrenal glands didn't know how to work on their own. They were working on that caffeine. Caffeine, not so good. And anything, in, in, talking on that, in anything that you're addicted to, right? Any kind of an addiction. Oh, I've got to have this, I've got to have this or else I can't function. Hey, is that ever good? No. No, that's, that's just not ever good. Guys, it took me about 16 months to get off of caffeine. That's how bad it was for me. And another thing that I want to talk about, since we're talking about this, oh, God, I could talk forever. Um, another thing is that, really briefly on the caffeine. So, so have you heard that some people are more susceptible to alcoholism because of a gene in their body? Yeah? They're like, well, I must have the alcoholic gene, or he must have that alcoholic gene. Well, well, the same thing with caffeine. You can be more sensitive to caffeine depending on your genetic makeup. But guess what? Same thing with carbs. Okay, so they're like, if your mom is heavy, if your dad is heavy, if your uncle's heavy, grandma's heavy, grandpa's heavy, you're like, that's it for me. Dang, it's in my genes. Can't do anything about it. Nope. Same thing with the alcoholic, right? I might have the alcoholic gene right now, but what do I need to do for that gene to express? What do I need to do? Drink. Yes. So, yeah, I might have that gene for, for pretty, pretty heavy hips, and I might have that gene to put weight on my arms or even maybe the gene for a really heavy abdomen. What do I need to do for that to happen? Excess carbs. Same thing, guys. You have complete control of your body composition. We just need to learn what to eat, and then we'll get to win. So we talk about, oh, starches. Little starch. Starchy are those really dense foods, like the potatoes, the sweet potatoes. Are we familiar with starches? Little starch, okay? Little, little of the refined foods. When, when I feel like I, I know my body, when my body needs starch, like, or like the workout today, if I, if I had done, today's my recovery day, and I didn't work out today, but last night if I was going to work out and do, was it, what is it, Bobby Jackie? I would have had starches, for sure, okay? Because for me, uh, 30 pull-ups, that's a lot. 
and I know that would have killed me. And I don't know about you guys, the row machine gets me every time. Rowing hard for a thousand, I, I would have known that it would burning a lot more, and I would have known I needed a little bit more energy, and I would have thrown in the starches at that point, but I don't have starches on a daily basis. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can kind of tell when your body needs it. And then no sugars. We talked about the different kinds of sugars. <coughs> when they say no sugar, and especially for this challenge, we mean no sugar. Not a bite, not a pinch, not a cheat. If you detox your body from all this sugar, detox your brain, start bringing, start bringing this down to a nice fat burning mode, you're gonna feel awesome. But guess what? It's hard. It's hard for about, about, gosh, I heard anywhere six to ten days. I thought I was going to eat my shoe. I got so hungry. I am serious and cranky. Whoa. Okay. You push through it. You guys, you can do it. You can do this. Push through it. Um, make, make smart food choices when you are hungry. Okay? So we, this is what we eat. And now we're going to get to how to eat and when. So we talked about this. This is what we call paleo, all right? But remember when I told you I went all carnivore and was eating all the meat, and then I wasn't measuring my nuts, and I was getting no results? Well, it's because I didn't have accuracy and precision. All right. If you're going on a long road trip, in your car, your truck, your whatever, um, and let's say you're, you're completely empty, your tank's empty, when you go to fuel up, this sounds dumb, but this is what we do to ourselves. When you go to fuel, fuel up, are you going to watch to see how much fuel you're putting in? Yeah. Are you, are you going you to you wanna hit it at the top, let it click off, and know you have a full tank, right? Okay, we got to know how, we've got to know how much fuel we're putting in our bodies. It is what's fueling our bodies. And I talked about the calories in and calories out. I'll put this right here. It's like this bucket. Yes, I'm an artist. A bucket, pretend, okay? And so uh, if you want to eat and uh, fill up, fill that tank all the way up to the top, right there. That's your, that's your food, right? I'm eating food. I have awesome fuel. I'm ready to go. Uh-oh, I'm eating more food. Spill. I keep eating more food. Too much fuel. Fuel, fuel store, even if it's a protein, even if it's a sugar, what do we store it as? Fat. There's this excess. Wow, too much fuel. I'll just put this over here in fat molecules. Once you, once you grow a fat cell, you can't lose it. You can shrink it, can't lose it. We eat too much, guys. Our bodies got used to eating too much, all right? So we need to control these portion sizes right here. Um, when, we, when we talk about paleo zone, all that means is that we're eating the right food choices in the right amounts, right here. I'm just going to move this so I don't have to erase it. And Bobby drew, kind of drew a, a, a little bit of it already. When we talk about paleo zone, we're going to talk about blocks. The foundation behind blocks is that you want to eat enough food to get that tank full, but we don't want to support the fat on our body. We only want to eat enough food to support the muscle on our body. So let's say if, 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 if I'm some like 400 pound man, He's like, well, I'm a big man. I need to eat 6,000 calories. No, we don't want to feed the fat. We only want to feed the muscle, all right? So when we, when we consider these, we ha we'll set your blocks on, on, on your ideal body. The body you want to have is what you want to feed, all right? You don't have to get caught up in numbers because I'm going to make this a lot easier for you. But those of you that are interested in tracking, I'm going to go into the numbers very quickly. One block on the zone is always equal. That's the foundation of the zone, is making sure you eat your protein with your carb, with your fat. Something awesome happens with our energy systems. We burn when we get all three combined at the same time. Not, ooh, I had my protein this morning, let me grab some nuts for my fat, and then dang, what about my carb? I'll figure that out later. No, this is based on eating it at the same time and getting a proper block put in. This is one block. And I'll go off of my numbers right now. Um, I have 117 pounds of muscle, okay? So what we want to do is about 10%, so 11 blocks. What I say is just take, off the, just take the first two numbers. And lots, lots of you, raise your hand if you've had a body scan from over there at Ideal. Okay, at, over at Ideal you can get a body scan and it tells you how much muscle you have. 
well, that's how much I want to eat right there is for the muscle. All right, so I, I'm an 11, 11 block um, athlete. When I, when I train pretty hard, when I want to get but two wads in, and then I go and teach seven dance classes, I bump my blocks clear up to 15 blocks. I kind of know my body. For now, while you're getting used to it, stick with the same amount of blocks and see how you feel. Most, most, pe most women are going to be around 10 blocks. If you're a shorter, like Coach, uh, Marcy, the other uh, instructor, she's about nine blocks. And um, so I'm at 11. It kind of depends on your muscle build, if you're burning a lot of fat. I think most women for weight loss are going to be around that, that 10. Men, you can be to 12. Some, some men just have a lot of muscle and they're tall and they're up to 15 blocks, okay? It all depends on that, on your muscle build. It's hard for me to calculate, well, this is one block and I need, let's say, 12 blocks. So I want to eat four times a day. So I've got to do three blocks. It's kind of, the numbers start tripping you out a little bit. You're like, okay, so I got to times that protein by three. The, what they want to teach you is a baseline zone. It's the easiest way to do this. And guys, it works pretty good without having your food scales. By the way, if you mean business and you're tired of not losing weight, weigh and measure your food by the dang scales. It will make every difference in the world. You're like, oh, I thought I was eating three ounces of meat. No, you were eating one. You need to, three times as much meat as what you were eating. If you really mean business, weigh and measure. If you want, want this to be an easy transition for you to be like, huh, I could do that, do this. Hold out your palm right here. Look at your palm, look, excluding, your, excluding the fingers, right? See, look at his palm compared to your palm. Yeah, he needs a lot of protein. That's your protein right here. Turn it to the side. Thickness. Can you guys picture a steak like that and about that thick? Yeah, pork chop like this, that thick. Look, look, two pieces of sausage and a bacon. <laughs> that's me, bacon girl. Love my bacon, okay? That's right there. That's going to be your protein. And th these portions that I'm telling you, it's a three-block meal. That's three blocks for you, okay? We're just making it easy for you to eat four times a day. So, um, and like, like cat, your hand, your hand's probably even smaller than my hand. So you don't need to, you don't worry about, oh, I better eat a little less because I'm not up to 12 blocks. Your hand's already smaller. Does that make sense for everybody? Go off your hand. If you have your eye in your hand, you can do the zone. Okay, protein the size of your palm. And everyone clench your fist. The whole shape, including the volume inside, that's, your, that's going to be your carbs, if it's a dense carb. If you guys want to go the little bit easier way where you get to still eat your dairy, you get to still eat your breads, you get to still eat your rice and pasta, if you're going to go the slower way, one fist of carbs, okay? So right here, the protein, it's the palm. Carbs, starchy carbs, the carbs that might have a little bit of those spikes like that that make you feel good. Those starchy carbs, it's one fist. One of the starchy carbs. Potatoes, pastas, rice. Are you guys all with me on the starchy ones? Sweet potato. But this is the way I eat. Uh, uh, we mentioned that. I throw in starches every now and then. If you don't do that, you can go or, not both, or two fists of the, of the natural whole foods. Go like this. That's a lot of broccoli. Okay, that's a salad with tomatoes and then, then some broccoli. That's an apple with carrot sticks or celery. Okay, you, you get these carbs in, guys. You scrimp on the carbs and guess what? Remember the insulin? Pretty soon you're going to get the dips and the, and the spikes and then you go into the store. Don't burn fat, store. Don't scrimp on your carbs. And then uh, the fats. It says 1.5. And, and if I remember any numbers, because sometimes, sometimes it's hard to measure out the fats. What they say, what they said at my seminar, was that you cup your hand and it should fit in this hollow part right here. Guys, it's about nine, nine nuts. That's it, nine almonds right there. Or like, what, four or five olives, okay? It doesn't take very much fats to get up to, to your blocks. And remember, that 1.5, that's one blocks. Do you remember how many we're eating in our meal? Three. Okay, so don't go off that 1.5. If you want to consider how much is in your meal, you're timesing it. So that would be 4.5.
4.5 grams in your one meal. Is this making sense? Is it better? Do you guys like numbers or no? Some people are like, I want the numbers. <laughs> yeah, the zone is much easier if you don't consider these numbers. So fats, for me, I say one tablespoon. It's easier for me to remember. One tablespoon. So you've got, you've got all these veggies. How are you going to get all these veggies down? Use a tablespoon of coconut oil, saute the veggies. Drizzle olive oil on your meat or whatever you're cooking. Uh, a lot of that old mindset of, whoa, I'm eating too much food, or, ooh, I need fat free, a lot of it's that fear of fat. You will not release fat until you eat fat. Your body needs fat to function. And so if it's not getting fat, it, it says, hey, I need fat to function. Store fat, store fat. She's not eating any fat. You better store, okay? Eat the fat, get your body systems uh, running properly, and then you'll start to burn fat and get rid of the excess fat. We did how to eat, and now let's do when. The author of the diet says you should not go more than three or four hours until your blood sugar starts to drop too low, and then you're trying to recover from there. If you can eat every three, four hours like this, three or four times a day, something awesome happens. Your body starts like trusting you to feed it properly, and it'll start burning like you've never felt before. Your muscles will start recovering from your exercise. You're like, man, I'm actually putting on some muscle. You will get stronger, you'll have more energy, you'll be healthier, and best of all, you will start meeting your weight loss goals. Uh, it, you have to have it at the same time. Really quickly, uh, Dr. Barry, Barry Sears, the one that came up with the zone, and he recommends the paleo foods, someone said this, if you could be like I was, all carnivore, eating completely organic, perfect foods, and not measuring, and not quite knowing what you're eating, or if you could be over here, weighing and measuring, and you choose for your carb and your, for your, carb and your protein a hamburger, and then for your fat, like seven french fries, he's like, what would you choose? And he said, are you sure it's only seven french fries? And he said, yeah, it's, it, it, it's in the portions. And he said, this. Isn't that interesting? It's about eating the three foods at the same time in the right portions. Now, he said, I'm not recommending you go out and you're like, ooh, yeah, I can have seven french fries if I, I can have my hamburger every day. But yeah, if you're in a bind and you're traveling, know your portions. Get them all together and you should be okay. Questions? Yes, let's start back here, then we'll come to writing. Yes, I, my omega-3 is my fish oil. In the, one in the morning, one in the night. Yes, uh, I just consider that a bonus. The omega three is in my salmon, and that salmon's a great choice, by the way. Um, it's got a, that really good balance of the fat. No, you don't. Not too much, because remember, I don't know if I threw it out there. Um, back in the day, the pioneer day, or did you say even the paleo caveman day? Uh, the ratio to omega threes to omega sixes was about one to three. Today, in our diet, it's 1 to 20. Too many omega-6s. So all the omega-3s you can get, bonus, but don't go crazy on the fish oil. I did that. No, not good. <laughs> not good. You'll know when to back off. Let me tell you. You'll know when to back off. I did, I did go up to 2 in the morning, 2 in the night. Yes? A start, yes. So is that potential energy, or what is starch for a heavy day? Oh, yeah, exactly that. So, you know, when, I, when, we, hit the, when we eat a, a simple thing, like say, uh, ooh, oranges, hit your blood sugar fast. You can tell that, right? The, um, the, it's the molecules in the starch. Instead of being um, bound like this, and easily and just easily digested, I don't want to get too complicated, they're called long chains, a long chains of sugar, and they're branched out longer, and it takes longer for it to digest. So I knew if I ate it at night, it would still be pre-chained, pretty, pretty available for me to use in my morning wad. Now, if my, if my workout had been in the evening, or maybe even late afternoon, I would have waited till the morning to have my starches. And you'll start being able to feel that. You'd be like, oh man, I feel so much better now. I'm ready to work out. Once you start eating clean, your body will start sending you signals that you haven't even heard it before. You'll start knowing. Ooh, speaking of that, 
I didn't, I, I started eating clean, I, and I took out the wheat and the dairy. Okay, guys, should we go there? Raise your hand if you're a dairy lover. Love your, you guys love yourself some dairy. <laughs> you're like, dairy right here. Okay, I'm not saying, we should go over the stuff that's not on there that we love to eat, okay? I'm not saying that dairy is bad for you, and I'm not saying that dairy isn't nutritious. What I am saying that dairy has a very high allergen response. It, some people, yeah, some people more obvious than others. They will have this really high dairy and they'll be running to the bathroom for like hours afterwards. They're like, okay, I can't have dairy. Guys, not me. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I was intolerant to dairy until I took it out of my diet. And it wasn't like, oh, I feel awesome now. Guess what happened? I put it back in my diet and then I was sick sick and I felt terrible. I didn't notice how awesome I had been feeling while I took it out. Does this make sense to you? So I took it out and I'm like, well, I, yeah, I think I feel good. Yeah, it, feels, it works for me. But when I put it back in, and uh, my, my doctor, my brother's a doctor, he said when you put it back in, do a lot so you can get a really strong response. Oh, guys, the dairy about killed me. And I was having dairy on a daily basis, milk, cheese. I, I didn't really feel it. It's that silent inflammation. It's hurting you and you don't know it. That's why Will and Bobby have said for this challenge, no dairy, no wheat, and then you'll take 30 days to get it out of your body. And we're not saying eat like this forever. We're not saying no dairy for you ever again. We're saying get it out of your system because you might be allergic and you just don't know it. You might be holding on to your weight because your body is not responding to that dairy. You have no idea. The wheat. For me, guys, for, for, for me, wheat, I wasn't feeling like uh, crappy or allergic or whatever when I put wheat back in my diet. What happened was I had less energy. I couldn't explain it any other way. I put the breads back in, and guess what else happened? When I put bread back in, I had major sh sugar carb cravings. I had cut my cravings out. I was eating like this. I didn't crave chocolate. I, didn't cr I was eating for energy, and that was it. I had no cravings, no craving ice cream, and I... None. But when I started eating breads and healthy breads, the sugar cravings came back. So I'm like, that's it. No bread for me. Okay, this is what we're saying. We're not saying no wheat, no dairy. We've explained the wheat, how it causes inflammation in your body. You might even have something similar to celiac disease and get a negative test, but you really are more like a celiac response to wheat. We're saying try it for 30 days. See how awesome you feel or see how bad you feel when you finally do put it back in after the 30 days. And Riley, did we ever get to your question? Oh, um, the way protein shakes in the morning? Yes. G good. Well, like I said, what if you're one of those people that really respond to dairy, right? And it's made based off of whey. I, I had that bad response to dairy, but my whey protein doesn't bother me. It's a whey isolate. It's kind of a, different than it. Um, in the morning, if you are using your protein shake, uh, it doesn't, who supplements with protein in here? Okay. Know your protein shake. Make sure you're not going to have a really high insulin response. Make sure it doesn't have a bunch of sugars to make that protein taste better. But also know whether you have a whey protein that's just protein because look, you're only getting that, right? So um, know, just know what's in there. Know when to take it and how to take it. I use my protein shake, not the whey, the complete protein shake in the morning because if I eat real food in the morning and then go try and do upside down handstand push-ups, not so good. Yeah, you know what I mean? Or really heavy weight set. That food does not feel good. So I do use my protein shake. I try to make it as um, close to natural as I can. I try to balance this for sure. Balance that in your shake. If it doesn't have carbs, you've got to get some carbs if you're counting it as your meal. If you're counting it as your recovery, I would just do the whey and apple. Is anybody here interested in, in recovery? Recovery after? Okay, then I'll touch on it very quickly, okay? You need to recover your muscles after a hard workout. Let's say we just did like 80 thrusters. Man, in the quads, you just pumped all the glycogen out of your muscles. It, they're just depleted. You pump those out. We tell, I just told you, don't, don't do this spike. You never want this spike. Because why? What, what does it tell your body? What does insulin tell your body? Store. Awesome. But, but right after your workout, and this is the only time, when those muscles are pumped, and they're depleted, and no, there's no glycogen left, they're saying, feed me, store, store. That's the only time I purposely spike my insulin. 
I do it on purpose because if you do it within 30 minutes to 45 minutes right when your workout ends, and I mean right when you stop that, that last thruster, 45 minutes, you spike your insulin, the glycogen just goes right back to your muscles. It helps those muscles recover. You'll have a much, you won't be quite as sore. The next day, you're not gonna be like, oh, those thrusters killed me. You're gonna feel a little bit better recovered and better energy stores the next time you go to use your energy. How I spike my insulin is with a whole food every time. No, lied. Sometimes when I know that my blood sugar just crashed, I, I will pop something that has glucose. No fructose, glucose. But it's mostly just an apple, guys. I keep it simple. For my recovery, it's, it's my scoop of whey and a whole apple. And I try and have it as I'm leaving the door. I saw Chelsea doing pretty good with your recovery, your apple in there. You start recovering and you'll notice better gains and better performance because you just shredded your muscles. That's what we do, right? Your muscles kind of shred down. They've got to build back up again. Well, if you don't give it the nutrients to build back up again, you're not recovering, you're just shredding, okay? And if you don't eat, then if you don't have any energy, if you don't have your carbs and your fats and your proteins in your system before you work out, you're gonna start metabolizing your muscle. We don't want that either. So watch your pre-workout and your post-workout. Yes? Yeah, thank you. So let's, let's touch on this really briefly one more time right here. This is the way you should be eating small women or three meals. Medium-sized women will be in between four meals. Men should eat five meals like this. Guys, you, you, you don't, a lot of you guys don't eat enough. A lot of you guys don't eat enough food, okay? So this is a three-block meal. And what, what I'm going to do for you is, uh, on, on that page, on our Facebook page, and I will make some copies here at Vernal CrossFit, there's this chart right here, and it tells you exactly how, much, how many blocks is like an apple, or how many blocks is a handful of nuts. Because remember, my number was odd. It's, it's 11. So I eat my three meals, but that only puts me at nine blocks. Are you with me still? At nine blocks. If I still have two more blocks, I'm like, well, how do I do two blocks? There's a list, I kind of know in my head now, but there's a list of how you can break it down. Or let's say you need a snack. Let's say you're starting to go past four hours and you know your blood sugar is gonna start spiking, then you're gonna start storing fat. You're like, I don't wanna store fat, I gotta eat something, but not a whole meal. Well, just know what you're eating and try and make it balanced. Uh, the piece of fruit, a, hand, a block of nuts, jerky, just try and make your choices. But we will provide that information for you so you're completely comfortable saying, Okay, I need four blocks of protein. Look at the list for four blocks of protein. Yeah? Anybody that wants me to set their blocks for them off their scan, I can do that for you. But I can pretty much say that you guys are going to be, women, you're going to be around 10 blocks. Does, does any man in here know how many blocks they're eating? How many? Yeah. Uh, we will work with you. Okay, we, we will work with you on that. The biggest thing is make it easy. All right, Miss, just, to, just to wrap things up, it's not going on a diet, it's not the can eat, can eat, it's getting it in the right balance, getting all different kinds, don't go too long without eating, ideal foods as much as you can, don't freak out or fall off the wagon if you have a less ideal food, yes. Right. Um, if you have a workout in the morning, or if you, is, are you talking regarding workout or just in your life? Okay. Um, I hit a plateau, and I couldn't figure out why. It was because I didn't get my metabolism revving early enough in the morning. I was waiting till like 11, 30, 12 to eat. You, if you do wake up, one of the most important things in the morning is water. A, a big old, huge old glass of water. Get that right back out to your muscles. And then as soon as you can tolerate the food, eat. Because that's what happens, is you're gonna be able to fit your three, four meals in in a day, because you just got some up in the morning. Besides, f food is fuel. You need that fuel in, in the morning, even if you don't feel like it. But it, do you know what's interesting? When you eat in the morning, you'll feel hungrier. It's because you're, you're running. You got that ma machine going. Yeah, that's your question. Good. Anybody else? All right, thank you so, oh, yes. No, you're good. Uh-huh, I thought about you guys out there. Right. 
right? That's exactly what I was going to say, is food prep. Right. You're like, how am I cooking this? So, uh, I, the only thing I've found is pre-cooked chicken breast. Right. You, and and you can do that. And that would be, that would be ideal, because that, that, this comes back to the ideal or less ideal, but you have to eat. It's better than going hungry, because I couldn't have the right kind of protein, you know what I mean? Eat what you can. The best thing would be, think beforehand. When I travel, uh, even when I just traveled out to do my certification for CrossFit, I packed with me my protein powder. It sounds dumb, but I'm like, yeah, this is me with my protein powder. It's because I knew I wasn't going to have good food choices out there. And so I do really recommend that a really nice, solid, um, less additives as possible, low sugar, but a balanced protein powder for that. Also, um, hotels will often have a, a fruit basket, and I rate it right when I get there. Bad, huh? I know. So they've got apples hanging out. I'm like, whoa, there's my carb for the morning, there's my carb for night. Uh, you think ahead, prep time. Is anybody here out in the oil field? Yeah, there's a lot of people out there, or even just moms. Moms, don't forget to feed yourselves, okay? You feed your kids, and then your kids are eating and you're still cooking or cleaning up. You, you make your meal. And if I could say this one thing, I can't tell you guys what to do. Don't feed your kids the corn dog and then you fix yourself your blocks, okay? You know what I mean? My boys love this. They love fresh food. We can feed our kids like this. They're not gonna turn their nose up at it. You can do it, but it takes the prep time, like you said. Be aware. Uh, be aware of more protein choices. I think that's where you'd run to, because you can grab fruit for your carb. You can grab nuts for your fat. Your protein choice is what might get you. And I do a low sodium, a low nitrate jerky. That helps me a lot. You know, nitrite's not so good for you. They do make low sodium, low nitrate jerky. And actually, my husband got an elk this year, and I've been living off of the elk jerky. Yeah. Right. Right, especially if you're traveling and you do only have that microwave. I'd say for the deli meats, it'd be in the middle. Now, ideal, not totally bad for you with the nitrates and the sodium in there. I would say it's, it's about in the middle. But if it comes down to eating nothing or eating a cheeseburger, eat the deli meat. You with that? Yeah. Do you think if you're eating things with gluten in it, you're going to be able to balance out things? You mean if you go gluten free? I'm gluten free. Yeah, and so you can still balance it out without eating yeah. bread or anything like that. Because look at this. No grains, no nothing, right? No, and it's, I will tell you this, it's hard. It took me a month. You guys, we gotta relearn how to feed our kids. We gotta relearn how to feed ourselves. For me, I was the, okay, let's put a meat on, let's do a side, do you know what my sides were? Um, Pastaroni, is that what it's called? Pastaroni got my side, got my Lipton. This is a side. Open my can of whatever, that's my side. Ugh, no sides. Just get your veggies in there. Get your meats in there. Um, for kids, if you do want to touch on that, that quickly, I am not refined. I do not do sugars, pastas, or anything like that. I do for my kids. Your kids need energy. They're growing. They need more carbs. Okay? Stay away from the gluten. There's tons of resources out there for you. You can Facebook me, and I'll give you all the gluten-free resources. That worked a little bit, and it didn't help much. No, what it is, is it's hard. We can do hard things, though, especially if it means your kid isn't going to get diabetes by the time he's 14. You know, we can do hard things. We learned to do this a little bit out of a different nutrition class, but you ate bread, meat, and your fruit all at once. Oh, and that's a good point. Bread completely so right. Yeah. Milk, you know, because we have milk, bread, protein, and... All there. So remember when we said ideal or less ideal? When, it, when, I, when you get this handout, guess what it's going to have on it? Milk. It's going to have the dairy, the four-block meal. That would be you, four blocks in one meal, maybe even five. Um, it, here it says, for a four-block dinner, you're going to have, um, for, for instance, it says turkey and greens, four ounces of a turkey breast, two and a half cups of kale, saute garlic and, and crushed red peppers in olive oil, add the kale, have two peaches for your dessert. Two peaches, okay? This is four blocks. But for instance, right here, it says for your fruit salad for breakfast, it'll say a cup of cottage cheese. This right here, this is the easiest way for you to adapt to that. This is not the healthiest. Yeah, sometimes doable is better than 100% healthy. Are you with me on that one? 
You, you've got to be able to do it. If, and that's what I did with my kids. It was hard for me to cut out dairy and wheat, so I started gradually. I just did the wheat, got used to no bread, then we cut out the cheese, and then they got used to eating other things and they forgot about all the other stuff. But make it doable. Don't make a plan. Right now, people, don't make a plan you're not going to stick to. Make a doable plan, ideal foods, stick to it. Commit to it. It will be a little bit hard, but it's so worth it in the long run. Yes? Um, one thing that's kind of hard, though, is once you take all this information, you're really excited about it, then you go into the grocery store and you go, <laughs> What? You know, where do I start? There's just so many distractions. There's that's such a good, I, that's such a good point. Exactly. As not that great. I go down the center. I go down the frozen fruits and veggies. Yeah. I don't even. I don't even go in there. I don't want my kids to see it when I'm in there. We go around the outside and we go down the fruits and veggies and check out. My little boy even told someone in the checkout line, "Ew, that has red 40 in it." <laughs> He's a four. He's a four. These kids learn. They'll learn and they'll be stronger and they'll be healthier for it. But you know what? Bobby's here. I'm here. Will's here. Uh, we've got the Facebook page. Reach out to us because it's going to be like new territory for a little while. But at least for the 30-day challenge, we want to we wanna put it out there. We challenge you to do this. We challenge you to see how your body feels when you're eating the right way. I hope I've answered your questions today. Thanks. We don't expect you guys to remember every single thing we talked about. We have our Facebook page. Vernal Health or Healthy Vernal Crossfitters. Okay, I don't remember exactly what it is, but anyway, Vernal's Health, Vernal Healthy Crossfitters. It'll be written on the board as soon as I remember what it is. Probably on Monday. Um, we we've been through a lot of stuff. I personally, everybody that knows me, Alicia, my sweet sister, can pertain to this. I for 30 days ate tuna fish, grilled chicken, broccoli, cottage cheese, and water. That was it. It was the worst idea I ever had in my life. My entire life changed because I started seeing results and it helped push me to the next level, but I crashed. And when I crash, I get rock bottom. And I don't want you guys to do that. We want you guys to be able to maintain these good diets by making good choices. Don't, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be good. Just like she said, ideal, not ideal. Try to stick to the ideal side. Um, just, if you have any questions, if you guys do need help, we do know that, you, that you're going to need it eventually. So, feel free to ask us, and uh, thanks for coming. You guys were awesome.